good evening to all of you it's been a wonderful session and a very good speakers and the panelists mm -hmm. the last will be a periprosthetic uh, tibial plateau fractures so as you all know the the artificial replaced the tibial condyle with the process in situ the fracture around are uh, very very rare that too particularly on the tibial side you commonly would have seen the periprosthetic on the distal femur the tibial component fracture is very rare here you can see an example of a 57 year old uh, who had a sustained a trivial fall at home and she had a right knee replacement done two years ago she has not no coma bit uh, illness we all do a ct scan to look for the uh, the prosthetic loosening even though we have an uh, a distraction because of the processes views we will be able to see the cement mantle uh, broken and the evidence of a prosthetic loosening here you can see the tibial fibrosity avulsion also so in this case it is interesting to note about the classification of the injuries and approach and the outcome in all these factors the classification for the tibial component or the felix classification is described in 1997 the type one is the the tibial condyle fracture where it is around the the, the proximal base and type two is around the stem and type three is below the stem and type four is the tibial tuberosity avulsion fractures again all the things subdivided into three sub types a is a well fixed process and uh, b is a loose process and c is the which happens intraoperative following the knee replacements Hence, our patient belongs to Felix type 2A. It is uh, around the stem, and it is a well-fixed process. Hence, in this, we have to look for the uh, the approach. Since most of the times, the only will be able to get a unicortical screws, so we always prefer to use uh, plates on uh, both the sides, both the medial and anterolateral approach, because of the osteoporosis, sometimes a broken uh, cement mantle, we may be a void following the fixation. Hence, you need to prepare for an allograft to fill the void. and locking plates are revolutionary in the treatment where you can have uh, even the unicortical screws have got locked with the plates and intraoperatively you should be prepared for if the pro if the process loose you should be prepared for uh, revising the one and this one we started with the dual up to medial and lateral approach here you can see the fracture is reduced and the tibial tuberosity was uh, fixed with the screws and we were able to see the partial the rupture of the patella tendon and following a fixation we were able to see a big void on the lateral side Hence, we prepared for an allograft to fill the void. Here you can see the patella tendon was uh, sutured with a suture anchor, and the void was filled with an allograft. So we started with the medial approach. We used the uh, the medial three point five LCP. The one screw was able to cross the uh, process, and the other one, other one was uh, unicortical screws. The similar one was done on the lateral side, where the the reduction was uh, satisfactory and the alignment was restored. Here you can see the postoperative X-ray, where the reduction, the varus correction, and the alignment. was uh, satisfactory on the stable joint and uh, patient had an early post operative follow up at one month after that she had a loss to follow up and when we enquired a patient uh, at uh, affected with the covid and was in icu for a longer time means the rehabilitation protocol was delayed you can see there is a good range of uh, flexion but there is an extensor lie which needs a good amount of uh, physiotherapy This is another one. This is an interesting uh, case. A 65-year-old female who had a knee replacement done had a, a periprost distal femur fracture. Which, uh, three years back, the plating was done. Now she had an uh, injured her uh, again. It twisted her left knee. It showed an all poly, all poly with the tibial condyle fracture. There is a varus collapse. Hence, this uh, CT showed the all poly was reasonably intact, but it is dislodged and the cement panel was broken. You know, the CT showing the inferior pole avulsion of a patella fracture. this may be a, by a classification it may be a 2a or b because of the displaced all poly there is a chance for uh, the process may be loosen in the similar way you have to use a dual approach first to correct the varus on the medial side and fixation of the uh, fragment and further buttressing on the other side of the locking plate we also prepared for nonlograph look for any void to fill up the gap so hence we started with the medial approach the varus was corrected and the fracture was uh, reduced and the medial plating was done which is satisfactory alignment then we went on to the lateral side so the anterolateral uh, plate was used and the similar approach the inferior pole avulsion was uh, fixed and also the lateral retinaculum was also repaired and patient was uh, given a good stable joint and here the post operative x-ray shows the alignment was uh, reasonably maintained both in ap and lateral view the patella was fixed with the screw and also the anchor 
This is that uh, two years follow up, patient had a good satisfactory outcome, patient had a good functional range of movement, her uh, extensor lag was uh, improved a lot. In the systematic review, and all these are uh, in about the peripositibial part of fractures, the incidence very, very less, it is up to only 0.5%. The type 1 were most common and it is a subclass A is treated with a locking plate, a B needs a revision and C is uh, many times it can be treated non-operatively non or by adding a plate. The complications following this peripartibial plate fracture are up to 50%, most of them are uh, delayed wound healing and wound healing complications and uh, the revision rates are also high. Hence, all these patients have been warned about the complications up to 50 percent is one in two may have a chance of uh, delayed wound healing and also the chance of uh, revision fixation as an algorithm in uh, all these type one two and three when the process is stable one it can be treated with uh, conservative management or an uh, locking plate fixation for an early mobilization when the process includes the revision orthopass is indicated hence to conclude the particularly the the peripositive table fracture the extremely rare injury Fixation is feasible in stable component, but patient has been explained about the higher complication rate and revision is because of complication of 50%. Betlatin injuries has, should be looked for and addressed appropriately for an uneventful outcome. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.